everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I have so many empties and near empties under my sink and there's leftover dye that I mixed in the May 2020 Chemnitz Dye Along live stream and I want to use it up and leave no dye behind. And so that's what we're going to do today. So starting off, I had some peacock blue that wasn't very soluble and I added it to a pan with about three liters of water, three to four tablespoons of vinegar, and added 200 grams of Nitpick Stroll fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I decided to just heat it until the water ran clear. Uh, I really, really like this color, but peacock blue is super frustrating because it just isn't super soluble. All right, then I had a bunch of near empties in avocado, frozen, delphinium blue, sour apple, and violet remnants. There ended up not being very much violet left, or sorry, there ended up not being very much delphinium blue left, so I added some violet to it. And then I started layering these colors on. The frozen and sour apple were so pastel that I sort of poured it over to create a bit of a base color. And then really focused on this more violet mix and the avocado mix and layering them. And the fun thing about avocado is that it really breaks. And so we got these pops of yellow. And you can see one of them on the screen right now. Um, but I thought that that added to this floral look. And then, well, I just layered the color. Um, I filled the squeeze bottles with some water uh, for all of them just to try to get out this remnant dye at the bottom and layered it and layered it and layered it. And in fact, I think of the video, this is going to be the one that's probably going to be the longest amount of dyeing because I lost track of how many times I flipped and I didn't make a note of it. But I just kept going until I could finish the colors. Uh, with some of these near empty bottles, I was actually surprised just how much pigment was left in them. Uh, yeah, because there, some of them, like the avocado, that went a lot further than I thought. And spoiler alert, I'm not even going to finish up that avocado. I will be using it in yet another project. And my arms actually got a little tired. I didn't wait in between each flip. I did them pretty close together and that let the color spread out a bit and add a bit of a softness to it. And the more and more I kept going, the more of an impressionistic feel this really had. Like it felt like it belonged in a Monet exhibit or like that if I threw up a Monet painting, you would think that this colorway was inspired by it. And I love something about the softness. The final result is almost neutral, but there are these shifts that give dimension to it. And I, I don't know, I, I love it. And yep, another flip. And it kept seeing like, oh, I could add more color here. I will flip again and then add more color there. But this is honestly one of my favorite techniques, whether I'm doing it with pastels or super vibrant colors, it can work so well. The reason why I had to flip so many times is that since there's not a lot of pigment, the color wasn't going very deep. And I wanted to make sure that there was pretty good coverage throughout. But yeah, I mean, just using up colors and I was really just looking to see what I could combine and add together and trying to leave no dye behind and make space so that way I can mix new dye stocks. Uh, I, I store my dye stocks in those plastic tubs I showed at the very beginning underneath a sink. So the secondary container is there in case any of the bottles leak. That way it doesn't make a mess. And therefore, woohoo, I used up that purple. I got one empty. Um, but I, I leave it down there just so that way, um, I don't know, it limits the amount of dye stocks that I can have at any given time. All right, our blue is done. And ooh, we're going to have a really fun project going on in there with the third one. I think that that's the one that's next. I have some notes. Yes. All right. So the remaining avocado went into the clear dye bath from the first colorway and I added a bit of, I'm not sure, maybe I just rinsed out the bottle again. Um, but I decided to bring on one of my favorite techniques and that as I wait, <laughs> I'm off camera twisting up some yarn. Twisted skeins, yay! Um, all the yarn today is Nitpick Stroll, which I hope I said it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. But the twisted skeins were not sinking. <laughs> 
not sinking. And so then I'm like pressing and flipping and trying to get it in there. This isn't going to be a problem in future rounds because once it's wet, it'll go in a bit better. But I realized I probably should have had more water. And I think at some point in the future, I add more water for that. Um, but I'll give a close up of all the yarn at the end. But oh, the avocado color is so pretty. All right. So in the container on the right, I'm now adding some leftover deep navy from Derma and some rest of Jacquard Violet. And both of those had dye that was at the bottom. The violet had clumps like of almost like the, an icing color, a gel at the bottom. And the navy had hard, dry chunks. And so in the hot water, I was able to get all of this to dissolve. And honestly, there was a lot more pigment than I thought. So rather than dip dyeing, I have, I think these might be dry. I'm not sure now. Let's see. Were they dry? Um, slow dipped. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. But so there was a lot of pigment. So it was worth using. As you see here, we got this gorgeous deep indigo color. But uh, the, the dye stocks weren't super, super usable as they were because they were so chunky. It wasn't consistent. So they needed to be used up. All right, I'm untwisting these skeins and dripping out as much of the liquid as I can because I need them to cool so that way I can retwist them because I'm going to add colors three different times. But I'll go ahead and set that aside and I think, yep, starting to mix the color. So for the second color, I've been using some Aztec Gold and Fawn. Um, the Aztec Gold is one is Jacquard and it's not my favorite color. Uh, it's good for mixing, but on its own, it reminds me a bit of baby poop honestly <laughs> so it's not my favorite but I think that for like a yellow brown it's going to be really great there was definitely a break in time between this step because I did need to let the yarn cool more before I twisted it off camera um and yes this is when I was like all right I need more water I gotta add a bunch more water I forget if I added more vinegar at this point certainly at some point I do but it's just a nice, subtle color. And in that time, our navy color is about done. And we'll start another skein on there. But look, all that pigment absorbed. And there's a chunk of something left that I'm trying to scoop up before I set the yarn aside. Oh, goodness. Doing this commentary on the fly is uh, very entertaining. Oh, I thought I was going to use some leftover dry dye powder. And then I hesitated. Um, I think I forgot about all the jars of color from the May 2020 Commits Dialogue, and I realized I wanted to use some of that. So I had some, I think, deep teal and true turquoise, and I diluted both of them and added color half and half. I sort of filled up that one liter container mostly with water and then topped it off with some of the dyes, which... Those weren't 1% stock solutions. A lot of the other remnants I was using today started at 1% stock solutions, but clearly that navy and violet were so chunky, it was more than that. Now, what we see on the right is super, super subtle. The differences are so subtle between the turquoise at the top and the teal at the bottom. And the final colorway remains subtle, but there is a distinct difference between those hues that I think you'll be able to see at the end. Um, and so in with our twisted skeins, I'm adding a yarn mop because the color wasn't all exhausting. And so I wanted to add some yarn in there to absorb that leftover color. Um, sometimes people get confused. It's not actually yarn from a mop, um, but I call it a mop because I'm mopping up that leftover color. And it's something that I love to do. And uh, it's a fun way to a clear dye bath so that way you can add more color without the original color being there um, and yeah oh and so I guess I'm going in and adding more um, of the teal I don't know if I added more turquoise too we'll see in a moment <laughs> my notes are very very like okay these are the colors that I used kind of level but Oh, I was like, what am I doing? I'm trying to get more of the water out of the yarn. And that is so the yarn can cool faster, um, but also to just reuse water in the pot. Uh, but I did take a break at some point. I'm not sure what I'm doing right now. Ah, waiting to show you guys the yarn, I guess. <laughs> in that quick little peek. Okay, so for round three, I used remnants of um, espresso 
chestnut, um, some of my 1% stock solution of brown, and then it was still a little too yellow brown for me. I wanted it to have a different intensity to the previous round. So I also added some pecan brown, which I think is my favorite brown dye color. Uh, I just wanted it to be deeper and to feel like a different hue from the more yellow tan color that we had before. And so I use a paper towel to check. I guess I added a bit more pecan. Uh, just there we go. I wanted, ah, and I even showed the little difference. <laughs> this is sped up about 500% in case you're curious. So I retwisted. Whenever I do these twisted skeins three times, when I retwist, oh, I guess I waited 10 minutes. <laughs> but when I retwist, I do make sure um, to try to bring some white to the outside and I try to manipulate it. And oh, when I flip the yarn over on the right, I didn't add color. The color penetrated all the way through, I think because there was enough liquid in there that it worked great. And so I was very excited, hence the thumbs up. And then on our brown side, oh, the empties. I, I emptied my empties. Um, but on the brown side, I added the same yarn mop back in because to help soak up that color. But yes, I did briefly share all of those empties I have, so many empties. And oh man, I washed all the yarn off camera in my standard way and in a few moments, you're gonna get to see what the finished dry yarn looks like, and woohoo! I know I've done voiceover time-lapse things like this for Leave No Dye Behind before, but this video feels different because it was very much like filming a live stream for me, except instead of being live, I wasn't. It was just filming it and not filming the breaks where I normally would have been sitting down and chatting. And it was so cathartic to just have a day of dying. And, well, it was also a lot of fun, and so I'd like to know what you think. Now, I was definitely filming this with my webcam instead of the DSLR, and so uh, as I'm filming these conclusions, I haven't gone back and watched the footage, so I'm not sure how things are going to feel. But all I know is that I'm in love with this yarn. The peacock blue tonal, ew, man, the blue is a gorgeous, gorgeous jewel-toned blue, and I just love this. The pastel layered colorway feels like an impressionistic garden. It is soft, and there are a few, I don't know if I see one right now, there are a few pops of yellow that I just think work so well. Here we go. That adds to the floral feel of this the very vintage floral feel. The navy and violet combination gives this beautiful, maybe it's an indigo, oh! There is a hint more warmth than navy often has from probably that violet, but it is so dark and saturated. But even though the color at the other end is less saturated, it is still super saturated in its own right. And so that makes this a fun, tonal colorway that is fairly unique from a lot of the more dip dyed things that I do a lot. I moved things to get our twisted skein three times a little bit more space. I'm a little surprised how much of the green disappeared, but the brown really overtook this colorway. There's still just like this colorway has some patches of, well I guess that's without the green or brown, but it gives this beautiful, random, non-repeating colorway that's a lot of fun. And I am really happy with the combination of colors that we have here. Even if the green doesn't come through, it feels very like foresty, like a trunk with some moss. It's beautiful. And the yarn mop is lovely, actually. Let's move it over there. And then finally, with some true turquoise and teal, we have this really interesting colorway that has these tonal sections and so it'll probably give micro stripes on socks. Uh, it's not quite a self-striping yarn, but I don't know, it's fun. The colors are so similar and I didn't really have to flip. And so that for me was really, really exciting. And I really should play around with more immersion dyeing in these shallow steam pans versus low immersion, if that makes sense. So I'm thrilled with the color coverage we got here. Well, there we have it. 
I really wish that I could have done this as a proper live stream, or really better yet, done this and made the live stream for the May 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue that much longer, because this is what I wanted to do at the end. But the reality of the situation is that my time for filming is so much more truncated. And by filming the video this way versus doing a live stream, I was probably able to go through a lot more of those nearly empty bottles. And now I have so much more space available so I can make new dye stocks and have those colors and probably mostly primaries is what I'll mix, but have them ready to go to mix and play and have it be a lot easier for me to play with commercial acid dyes when my time is so much more limited because camps and school and everything is canceled and my family is home with me. Please let me know down in the comments below what you thought about this format. I am really curious and honestly want to know, to know if this is something I should try to do more going forward or what. <laughs> One perk of this, besides opening up my bins to allow me to have more fresh dye stocks, but the other perk is that well, we've got a huge restock for the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop coming up. Uh, all of this yarn will end up in the Etsy shop, and so actually it's possible that it's there right now as the time this video comes out. So uh, head over and check out the shop. There's a link in the video description and in the top right hand corner of the screen. Uh, buying yarn that I dye in these videos is a great way to support the content that you see here. And yes, I'm really, really committed to trying to keep producing content over, well, I'd like to go on forever, but uh, things are hard right now, but I'm committed to trying to keep up my schedule. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoy my content, please subscribe, ring that bell to turn on your notifications, and engage with the videos. That's honestly the biggest way that you can help support the content I am producing here. You know, dropping a like or a comment when you really enjoy something. That engagement helps uh, more people see the videos, which helps me to continue to grow. And I have to say that I love being able to share my passion for dyeing yarn with all of you. I am often really excited by the colorways I create, but something about this set even though you wouldn't use all of them together in one project or anything like that, but I'm really proud of these colors, uh, especially using just a off the cuff, okay, I want to use up this color, what else can I draw from, what technique can I try to do, and I am really, really happy with the results, and I hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.